Dianne Feinstein, Richard Burr, uh, and a couple other Republican senators have, have sold stocks right before the market crashed because of COVID. Right before the COVID crash, they sold off their stocks, right? Dianne Feinstein, um, who's part of the Senate Judiciary Committee, ooh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, you mean the committee that was all about catching Trump for fraud? <laughs> sold $1.5 to $6 million in stocks right before the market crashed. Richard Burr sold about $500,000 to $1.6 million in hotel stocks, right? Uh, people in the hospitality industry are hit pretty hard by this, by all of this. They're hit very, very hard by all of this, right? And he just made money off of it. He made money off of people losing their jobs. He knew that that was coming. And instead of trying to take precautionary measures for this, he was just like, no, I'll enrich myself. It's all about me, baby. James Inhofe uh, from Oklahoma. Kelly uh, Loeffler from Georgia are also involved in this. You know what? Here's what I was saying. This is a nice positive thing that I'm going to say. It is so nice uh, to shit on Republicans again uh, for like just a minute. <laughs> Just like a minute to be like, ah, oh, we're back. This is this is where my career started, is going after Republican bullshit. You know, fucking going back to the basics. It's nice. It's nice to go back to the basics, you know, and shit on some fucking corporate corrupt ass Republicans that don't give a shit about the people and we're trying to fucking load up their pockets. Oh, it feels good. So all these people enrich themselves by selling their stocks and all this shit. Uh, and they made millions of dollars. And here's the thing. If you want to prove that trickle-down economics actually fucking works, what you can do is uh, take all of that money and then give it back to the people from which you stole it from. Right, Feinstein got it from like bio selling biotech stocks or some shit, you know, and and whoever Inhofe sold his stocks from, and and this Kelly Loeffler and uh, Burr stealing it from from the hospitality industry. Well, great. Now you can give all the people that are out of work from those industries the money that you that you stole from them. Seems fair. Seems fair. Considering what you did is called insider trading and it's motherfucking illegal. These people belong in prison. These people belong in prison. These are real criminals. Uh, and, you know, we, we, these people stole money. They played this insider stock baseball game that they do because it's, because it's what the stock exchange in Wall Street is. It's just play, it's just play time for rich people. It's just a mascot for rich people's money. It's how popular they are. That's it. We're not invited in it. We're not a part of that economy. We have our separate economy that's currently not doing well because we can't just inject money into our own economy. We control it. That's what they don't want us to see. So they stole a bunch of money and they need to go to prison. Here's how prisoners are treated, by the way. Uh, West Virginia charges their prisoners about three cents a minute to read books. They have like an ebook thing. It's three cents a minute. That's an hour of pay for every minute that they want to read a book. Okay, I think these hucksters should be charged three cents a second for, for a fraud. For every second of fraud they committed, they should pay out three cents. Uh, and by that, by the end of that, I mean, we'd be able to research, fund fucking research to cure a shit ton of diseases. No problem. No problem. On a last bit of note on this thing, I will say that... Um, so I just saw right before I recorded that uh, filing taxes is now going to be on July 15th and not April 15th. Mnuchin, Mnuchin came out and said that. Uh, great. I don't understand why it took so long, but fine. Uh, he's sending out checks directly to American people. Um, I think that it's coming in two parts. It's based on your income or something along those lines. Um, I just think you should, you know, fucking find a flat rate. 
for everybody making under a million bucks, hey, you know, we really think $2,000 is going to help you, bam, uh, send out those checks. Um, he's instating the UBI, and uh, hopefully that comes through for everybody that needs it. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I would, I would love that. That would fucking alleviate a shit ton of stress for me. Um, especially going back out on the road after all this is done. Uh, we're looking at 45 days from Monday is sort of the projection that we're talking about. That's a, um, that's a month and a half, you know, solid six weeks, um, that we are, we are going to, uh, we're going to be down the tubes on this shit. Uh, so, you know, to get the economy back on track so that these small businesses don't die out and people don't get pissed off at the government, the, the Trump administration specifically, uh, he's bailing out people. Now, what I do want to say about this, and I kind of, I didn't hit this as hard as I think I should have in the last piece that I put out, um, is, look, that doesn't mean that we don't need moratoriums. I know he's got moratoriums on foreclosures and evictions, but we need moratoriums on loans, any sort of debt-related thing, credit cards. We need moratoriums on flights right now. Why are you bailing out the flight industry when they're not offering refunds to anybody? Um, you know, it, it, the, the bailouts aren't really going to affect the fucking workers. Airline workers aren't looking at that bailout at all. They don't get to fucking see it. That's all going to prop up their stocks or these dumb, invisible things that don't fucking matter. Uh, what this means is if you're going to inject a thousand or two thousand dollars into the American people by giving them these stimulus checks, um, this does not mean that that we don't need a moratorium. This is because the moratorium was necessary, but we also have to look beyond that into what is the next phase how do we keep the economy running when when all this shit is over you know people are people are going stir crazy and when they come out of this thing and they don't have money to do things that's not fucking good either so that's what that's going to take care of it's going to take care of things for after uh all of this shit is done and then we can resume the uh, things as 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 they were planned no interest bullshit no you missed a payment so here's some late trip no that none of it's it's got to be both of these things have to operate in tandem in order to in order to 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 survive this thing on an economic front diane feinstein that's what they did diane feinstein richard burr james inhoff kelly blofler all these people secured their they secured themselves so when they come out of it they're fucking way well off. And then they can purchase all these stocks back up again. They secured themselves for their future. And now we have a way, we have a methodology in place that can do that. And I think we really should be playing it smart. And make sure if, if I mean, if Trump, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the guy. I don't like him. Um, not going to vote for him, I don't think. Uh, but I think he's securing the election. Um, you know, I really do. Because if he instates this UBI during this crisis, puts a moratorium like Bernie Sanders has been talking about, uh, and, uh, and takes care of the American people, I think people will immediately forget that his lack of... Um, Funding of the uh, funding of research and and you know anti academic stances uh, is is kind of part of the reason why we got us here and now he's kind of trying to correct that and fine good correct it right like help us help the people that you fucked over out super important let's also look forward beyond this thing. And let's think about preventative ways that we could have done this better and put a plan into place so that when this thing happens again in another two decades, uh, we, we're prepared. We have an idea of what to do. Rich people are already doing that shit.
it's time that we kind of the regular people also got an opportunity to uh you know be a part of that be a part of that plan so weeks stay safe um take care of each other uh don't hoard shit don't do that um you know if if you got an elderly neighbor make sure they're they're doing okay make sure they're kind of staying educated on what they need to stay educated on help them out if they need groceries and and things of that sort um and uh what else oh uh there's lots of people that need help not just in the artist community but in the in the service industry as well uh if if you are particularly feel inclined feel moved uh by the spirits in the universe or whatever it is uh, to, to become a sustaining member of what I'm doing or make a one-time donation uh, to what I'm doing, um, pl please go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, you can make a one-time donation there. You can make a sustaining membership uh, uh, patronage there and uh, and and you know uh, if you can I totally understand it's a tough time for everybody um, but the biggest thing you can do is like subscribe share get the word out about these videos uh, show it to people that you know are uh, are either interested in this topic or or would like to be interested in this topic would like to get something different um, so uh, yeah sharing is is a big way to to help uh, and hopefully when all this stuff is done, I hope to see you guys, uh, at a live show, uh, keep up to date by following my website and all of my social feeds. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you on the road.